What's going on and welcome back to another episode of Redefining Issued Equipment and in this video we're going to be going over the setup and configuration of the new Army Advanced or Airborne Tactical Assault Panel System or the ATAPS for short. Now in this configuration we have it set up from kind of more of like a leadership position um, and there are some things and kind of caveats that I'll talk about throughout the entire video if you're in a position where you need more than one radio But for right now, we just have the one radio on the non-dominant side uh, with that There will be a couple of caveats for the back panel system here I don't have the fire force molly panel in yet But I can show you a way that you can configure back panels to the shoulder straps and the back straps So that way it's, it stays in place and it doesn't shift around on you too much uh, when you're moving and setting it up on your kit and all that so uh, with that i'm just going to start kind of going from left to right so that way you guys can see what's going on and then we'll get into the back panel stuff at the very end uh, and go from there so with that on the non-dominant side we have one of tack taylor's fight light double mag pouches running two mags in that and then on top of that we have the blue force gear 10 speed double mag pouch to be able to plus up on mags and or run other equipment like GPS's, compasses, and other small items that you may need. Um, for me, and I know for some of the guys out there in the uh, demo world, uh, you definitely can fit some of the initiating systems that the military runs inside of these as well. So that is an option as far as uh, that goes. Next, we have the radio. So when it comes to radios, if you're in a leadership position where you just need one, that'll be a pretty simple answer. If you need more than one, then you're gonna probably have to set up another radio on the opposite side of the the uh, TAP system or the ATAP system. So that way you can run one and then you're just gonna have to shift your uh, general purpose pouch over a little bit. So then that way you have enough space to be able to fit everything in there. So uh, just a caveat for that for radio pouches. I believe this is just one of the old TAC Taylor uh, radio pouches that I've had for a while. Uh, it does a really good job for holding the radio and setting everything up and then uh, you can unbuckle it and kind of fold it out to be able to read all of the data on the board uh, or the little screen and then make any adjustments as needs as needed so we've got the radio there to be able to establish communications um, if you're a combo guy or an rto you can definitely run that here and then if you're running a 117 golf or some other radio you can definitely fit it in a small pack like this tactical tactical assault gear mission sustainment pack. So that is an option when it comes to running a larger radio with this whole entire system. Uh, so that way you're kind of keeping things as streamlined as possible and reducing how many additional bags and pieces of equipment you're running. Uh, with that, kind of moving on to the last bit that's on that left-handed side of the um, Molly panel, we have just a small general purpose pouch or just the pouch that you would use for your med kit. Now I'm a my personal preference is to run my med kit on my belt. It's just Velcroed into the interior of the outer belt. So then that way, if I ever have to ditch my kit, plate carrier, and anything else, I'm still running with my belt, and I still have at least a med kit to provide you know, self-aid and possibly buddy aid. So I would recommend um, if you can run that med kit on your belt, run it on your belt. But if you can't because it's a unit SOP and you have to have it either on the left or the right side of your kit, then I would just go ahead and run that right there. Uh, it is a little bit tight, so depending on the size of the pouch, you may have to lengthen out the uh, or stretch out your adjustment straps and then molly it on top of those as well. So it will work. Um, I just had barely enough room to be able to fit it through the molly, so I was able to throw it there. But uh, if you need that extra space to molly, molly it to the actual adjustment straps. Uh, with that, I'm going to skip the back panel and continue moving on over onto the right hand side. So right here, we have one of the old uh, aviation small general purpose pouches. This thing is actually really, really nice and very well put together. So um, if you can pick one of these up, I would definitely recommend doing it. It's about four inches by four inches by one to two inches deep. Um, you, it definitely stretches out a little bit more. And I have the ability to throw you know PBS 31s in here. So there's plenty of space with this small little general purpose pouch from uh, the aviation side of the house. I do know that Venture Surplus is selling these, so you can definitely pick them up for a really uh, fair price when it comes down to it. Uh, next, I just have a small multi-tool. So if you don't have the space to run a multi-tool on your belt, you can definitely throw it here on your kit. Um, with that though, there's also this multi-tool uh, pouch on the tactical assault gear 
permission to steam it pack. So you can throw it up there and then that opens up some space for another radio if you need that. Uh, if you do need to put a radio right here because you're in a leadership position where you have to have two radios, like I said with the little med kit over here, you may have to shift this general purpose pouch over just a little bit and molly it to your adjustment straps. So then that way it provides enough space to be able to run a, an additional radio. So uh, with that, when it comes to the radio cabling and everything, uh, before I get too far, I would highly recommend probably doing a relocator kit just because of the way that these guys sit. Uh, so then that way you don't have those antennas running and hitting you in the face. That uh, relocator kit can simply just tie right into your uh, radio antenna port and then wrap around into the cummerbund along that adjustment strap and then into the backside. And if you have a pack like this, you could definitely run you know, those antennas on the interior portions of the molly that's on the actual pack itself. And then that way, um, everything is nice, clean, streamlined, but then you can still run a full-sized uh, radio antenna or a body whip, uh, depending on your personal preference. So, um, so just some food for thought when it comes to the radio configuration piece, uh, use those relocators. If you want to have an extended or an extendable antenna, you can definitely still do that, uh, without having it congest the front side of the kit. So radios aside, the last little bit that we have on the right hand side is another Tactical Taylor Fight Light double mag pouch with the Blue Force Gear 10 speed pouch stacked on top of that. So again, we're running our primary load. We got four mags, uh, and then we also have two mags up here, and then one that will be in the gun. Uh, and then we have the space to be able to expand and contract based off of whatever mission essential equipment that you may need or want to take with you. So uh, you can definitely fit small GRG cards and note cards and all that stuff in here as well. So there's plenty of space for all of that. So. With that, when it comes to the back and talking about how to set this up, before I get into that, um, I would definitely recommend running a pack of some sorts, whether you get the full-size mission sustainment pack from, Tacta or from uh, Tactical Assault Gear, or you get the micro version of it, or you go with something like the Eagle Industries Matte Pack or the uh, Beaver Tail Pack. Any one of those should be able to work because they all have, for the most part, Molly integrated into them. Um, but I would uh, definitely recommend running one of those packs so that way it expands your kit's ability to be able to take whatever necessary and mission essential equipment that you need. Uh, just a brief overview on this. You have one large pocket for a hydration bladder, maps, large pieces of equipment, food, a uh, jacket of some sorts if you need to, depending on the weather conditions. Um, you can definitely fit all of that in the main compartment for that. And then on top, you have three additional magazine pouches to be able to carry additional ammo. You have that small multi-tool pack, and then you have um, two small general purpose pouches and then kind of a medium-sized general purpose pouch for whatever that you may need. So uh, I like this one a lot for that capability. Some of the other ones have similar capabilities. Some of them are just more of a backpack configuration. But for any one of those configurations and how you can set that up on this kit. It's pretty simple for the most part. So what you'll do is when you get the kit, you can, or with the pack, and you're looking at the shoulder straps for the ATAP system, you'll take the pack and you'll molly it into the top section of your shoulder straps. You have that one section of molly right there, so you can molly that right in. And then from there, you'll just lock those molly loops into the remainder of the pack. So that way they're not moving. If you want to, you can also reinforce the molly sections right here by adding zip ties. You'll just run it through both the, the pack molly as well as the molly on the uh, harness itself. And then that will help secure everything in place so that way this doesn't come undone. And then if you need to make any adjustments, it's a quick just snip that zip tie and then make your adjustments and then throw another one on there and then trim it down. So uh, definitely highly recommended way of setting that up if you don't have the Molly panel from Fire Force. But from there, what you can do to further secure any one of those packs that I talked about to the actual harness system itself or the ATAP system is what you can do is you can take your back straps. You'll have to cut off the little portion of the strap that's folded over and sewn on itself and then just take a lighter, burn that down so that way it doesn't come undone. And then 
you'll take this, completely undo it from your attachment system at the top of the harness and unweave it completely. And then you'll run it from the bottom through the molly portions on the back of the molly pack and then back through your adjustment system and then back down through the molly straps. That will help secure everything in place to where this will not get away from you. And then if you wanna further secure things, you can go ahead and go to the bottom of the pack system, attach the molly to the bottom of the pack system, and then also run a couple of zip ties here at the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. But your molly that you have on the back panel or the mesh back panel and the molly on the pack will zip tie together. And that will help secure things and keep things in place. And then you can add however many zip ties you want to the back of this so that way um, this doesn't shift around you too much. But when it comes to setting this up in this configuration, it is actually pretty comfortable. It is a pretty nice setup and configuration. So uh, this is just kind of one way that you can set up the entire ATAP system for more of a kind of a leadership role. Um, and uh, set yourself up for success and carry everything that you need for whatever mission that you're going on. So uh, if you have any questions on this, please feel free and ask. I will help out in answering those questions in any way that I can. If there's an answer that I can't answer, I'll refer to some of the 101st and 82nd guys that do run this system a lot more regularly. Uh, but um, either way, we'll help you out in any way that we can. So with that, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.